I'm outside the ModCon Island, the Cruiser Island, 16, um, and we'll just show you how the electrics work. So you can't really see it, but the... Welcome to Gav Alarm. Isolation switch was off, so we've just turned it on. Please wait for three minutes. Um, you've got the various alarms there going through their wake-up stage. So just give you an idea what that is, that's the isolation switch, that's a, a battery monitor that we don't really use that much, um, the water level gauges for the tanks, um, the grey water tank uh, doesn't have a gauge, <clears throat> and then you have the switchboard with resettable fuses, they're all labelled, um, we have the MPPT uh, solar panel um, uh, regulator, that's a 20 amp and we have the hot water system on off switch and then this one here which is the uh, inverter slash uh, battery charger switch so the inverter slash battery charger is housed underneath this seat here so I'll pull this up and we'll have a look in there so it's been off overnight so the battery charger is actually running now because I've just turned it all on so just to give you an idea, that's your DC to DC charger that charges the battery uh, from the car when you're driving. So that regulates the charge going to this uh, lithium battery here. It's a 240 amp lithium battery. Um, and this is the charger slash inverter. So just for people owners, if you're troubleshooting, this switch here has to be in the middle neutral position. And when this switch is in that uh, neutral uh, position, zero, middle position, the switch in the, uh, above the kitchen is uh, the one that controls this unit instead of this switch. Right, so we also have a shunt. That's a Victron Bluetooth uh, shunt which you can uh, monitor using your phone app. Um, various breakers and uh, fans to uh, extract the heat from this box. So to understand what is happening, uh, rather, having, rather than having to lift this up and looking at those lights every time, we use that uh, shunt there, the Victron uh, Bluetooth shunt with the phone app to just give us an indication of what is happening. So I'll open that up and we'll have a look. So on my phone, we have a few devices in the showroom here, so there's a few showing up, but this is what's on the um, island that I'm in now. We have the smart solar uh, charger. We can open that up later and then we have the smart shunt. So if you open up the shunt it will tell you what's going on. So the battery is at 100% charge. There's minimal current going in at the moment. Uh, minimal wattage and you have the battery voltage. It's all adjustable in the, um, in the settings. So you can adjust the, the battery and, and, and uh, discharge floor, that kind of thing. We've got it set to 20% on this one. So there's various things that you can play around with when you get to understand it, but the important thing is you can just uh, monitor your battery without having to uh, open up this all the time. Right, so we'll go back and go back to the Smart uh, Solar app, and we're inside here. And as you can see, zero watts are going in. Um, that's the voltage of the panels. And if we we're outside that current, that would tell you how much is going into from the solar. So two simple devices really tell you what's going on there. Right, so just explaining the obvious to some people, but uh, that is a 15 amp lead. The way you tell 15 amp is that earth pin there is bigger and that's a requirement for all RVs, camper trailers and what have you in Australia. And you come around and plug it in. Now we've got power, power going to the van. Right, so the switch is in the middle position which is off. We turn it up to here. that turns the battery charger on if you have mains connected to the outside like we just 
did and these sockets are now live. If we put it in the neutral position the sockets are now disconnected from power. If we are not on mains power and we want to use the inverter we turn that on and those sockets will be live but they're running off the battery not mains power. So in terms of sockets we have one on either side of the bed there and there. There's one in the kitchen as I've shown before. There's one above the dining area. There's one in the bathroom used for the, uh, there's one free, the other one's used for the uh, washing machine. I think that's about it. So what kind of appliances can we run off uh, the electrical system in the uh, caravan? Uh, when we're on mains power like we are now, uh, you can run anything like you normally do at home. So you're just running um, directly off mains power. But uh, with the inverter, you have to uh, inspect the wattage of your various devices and to see whether they'll run or not. So for example, this post toaster, if you look on the, the bottom, it has a, a wattage of, uh, what does it say there? 780 to 930 watts. So the inverter in this van is 2000 watts, so that, so that will run. Um, this uh, jug, uh, kettle, is uh, 2200 watts. Um, it might struggle. Um, there is some leeway, but uh, yeah, probably you're looking for a kettle that's under 2000 watts if you want to run off the inverter. So I unplug the van from mains power, so as I explained before, we have to switch it to inverter mode. And you can hear the clicking. Basically that's the switches turning on. So we go turn that on there. Then we operate the toaster. It's heating up in there. Anything with an element uses a lot of power. So toasters, kettles, all that kind of thing. You're looking at um, high power usage. Uh, best to avoid if all possible. You're better off using um, the gas and using the griller to, down here to make your toast. Uh, much more uh, energy efficient. So if we up, open up our shunt, we'll be able to see, uh, yeah, there we go. 89 amps. Being drawn just running that toaster. Yeah. So it's actually uh, 1100 watts. So what happens if you run something that's over wattage? Uh, so we have a 2200 uh, watt uh, kettle here, 2000 watt inverter, so we'll turn it on. And as you can see, it's, the current draw is 223 amps, which is a big current draw just to pour some water. It is working, um, but uh, not advisable. I mean, there is some leeway, but uh, not advisable to run the inverter beyond its capacity. So the microwave is also operable from the inverter. Just turn it on. Which is uh, really, really handy, but again, let's have a look and see how much power we're using. What is that? Yeah, 150 odd amps of power, which is a lot. So what happens if you overload the inverter, i.e. you use um, too many appliances um, for the capacity of the inverter? Well, let's find out. First one, we'll put the toaster on, and then we'll run the kettle. That's way overloaded. There should be a spike soon, and we should hear a beeping sound, that was it. There's an alarm sounding, and that means you've overloaded the system. So you should turn 
what you're going to have, which you will do. So regarding uh, inverter use, just because you have the power doesn't necessarily mean you should use it, uh, because the bigger draw on your uh, batteries, the more often you do that, uh, the less battery life you're going to have. So it really, um, if you have, um, you want to boil water, the best way is to use your gas. So you can um, uh, use your gas, uh, get the hot water from your hot water system for a start, and then just use your gas burner on, on the top of the stove there. And uh, that's a far more energy efficient and uh, way of doing it, and you're going to have better battery life. So as you saw from the previous appliances, there's a big draw. We're talking about you know, 100, uh, 250 um, amps of uh, power being drawn out of your batteries. Uh, that is going to uh, degrade their lifespan and uh, they're expensive. You want to keep them uh, as uh, pristine as you can for as long as you can. So yeah, it's there to be used, but uh, common sense has to prevail with uh, inverter use.